folks, we are blowing stuff up today. Yes. I have waited years to say that. Okay, we are blowing stuff up, but we are also investigating how to not blow up stuff as well. I know. Nowhere near as exciting. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Today, we're going to say boom a fair amount, see some seriously cool explosions, and we're going to talk about how MOV plus GDT is like magic. Paul Smith from Bournes joins me today to talk about Isomov, how Isomov brings the best of MOV and GDT together in one package, and how this fully integrated solution can help you not blow up your circuit that may be on its last legs. All right, before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Bournes. Hi, Paul. Thank you so much for joining me today. Amelia, thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Okay, so we're talking about ISOMOV today. But before we get started, what all will we be covering today? I'm going to be talking first about why having a GDT and an MOV in series makes a very good combination. Then I'm going to talk about the root cause of the end-of-life failures for MOVs. And then I'll introduce ISOMOV, which will deal with both of those. And I'll be showing some examples of some performance improvements. I'm going to focus on temporary over voltage and end of life characteristics. End of life meaning we test these until they blow up, which is kind of fun. Then I'll look at some competitive comparisons between the Isomov and the other products in the market. And I will then give a summary of everything that we just discussed. Okay, so Paul, let's talk about that first one, GDT plus MOV. What does this really buy me as an engineer? Very good question. So when you use any one of these parts by themselves, the MOV or the GDT, there's some issues. But when you put them together, it's like magic. Each one overcomes the weakness of the other. For example, if you just use an MOV, if it's in a circuit with voltage across it, it has leakage. So now you got current and voltage, so it's dissipating power, which means it gets hot, which means leakage goes up more, so it gets hotter. So you get into this thermal overload situation. And when you put a GDT in series with it, well, the GDT is a gap. There is no leakage current. So the MOV doesn't have that thermal cycle that it might go through that accelerates its aging. In fact, the only time the MOV ages is when a big transient event occurs, which triggers the GDT, turning the GDT on. Now current will flow through the MOV until the transient goes away and the GDT resets, current goes away. So the MOV only ages during these transient events. So that vastly improves the MOV lifetime. Now let's look at the GDT. If you put a GDT in there by itself, it's off, right? Everything's working fine. When a transient event occurs, the GDT triggers, turns on, short circuits that transient through itself, which is great because it's protecting everything else. But when the transient goes away, if your power supply has enough current capability, it'll keep supplying current to the GDT, which keeps it triggered. In the literature, this is called follow-on current. And if the GDT stays triggered, it's just sitting there dissipating heat, it gets hot, and that decreases its end of life. So if you put an MOV in series with it, when that transient event goes away, the MOV comes out of clamp, it's not going to let any current through. That starves the current to the GDT, which causes it to reset. So even though your supply may have enough current to keep the GDT active, it can't because the MOV is blocking it. So the MOV solves the aging problem of the GDT. The GDT solves the aging problem of the MOV. And so the series combination is fantastic. And this has been used for a long time. People can buy an MOV, they could buy a discrete GDT, put the two in series, and, and bam, you've got a fantastic circuit. That This has been used for decades. But to make it successful, you need to critically match the characteristics of both the MOV and the GDT. Ah, okay. So Paul, it sounds like GDT and MOV work quite well together. But what's the biggest problem we're looking to solve here? So the MOV is still being used. And so that's the weak link here. So I show here a couple examples 
of the rupture that can happen to MOVs that causes its end of life. And you can see these little, I've got red arrows pointing to the little points and they're all on the edge of the metal disc, as you can see. So something's happening on the edge. And if you look at this computer simulation, which shows temperature, you can see these hot spots on the boundary of that metal connector on the top and bottom. So what we've done with the isomov is we've optimized that junction to spread out this temperature effect. So what we've done is we've optimized the boundary between the metallization and the MOV material so that hot spot is spread out over the entire area of the surface, which increases its lifetime. Okay, so Paul, I'm curious, how does the isomov come into play here? Is this bringing the best of both worlds together, so to speak? Right, so if you look at the isomov, basically it looks like a GDT and an MOV together into a single package. And in fact, we've integrated the structure of the GDT and the MOV together into one cohesive physical unit. And you can see a diagram of what this looks like. You've got two MOV disks, one on the top, one on the bottom. There's a GDT in the middle there in the yellow area. The green is the glass seal, which keeps the gas inside. And the upper right here, we actually tore one apart, which is fairly difficult to do. And you can see the glass ring, that's the green, surrounding the GDT active area, which is that metallized part in the middle. And the equivalent circuit I show is the two MOVs surrounding a GDT. Now, two MOVs in series look like an MOV. So this is basically the same equivalent circuit that you get that I showed initially with an MOV in series. So what we've done is we've optimized the current density, which increases its lifetime. We've already done the matching and the engineering for you. So the characteristics of the GDT and MOV already optimal. And of course, it's just, it's one unit, it's one device, one two terminal device that you pick. You don't need two. Okay. So Paul, what about temporary overvoltage? I would imagine that the isomov would also help in that situation as well. Right. That's a very good question. So I've got a movie here that shows what happens when the AC line swells up. And AC lines, you know, in the U.S. it's 120 volts, and it can vary uh, as motors come off a line, compressors come on and off lines. Things happen which can cause that voltage to swell up. So what you're going to see first is a thermally protected MOV. Now it's got a thermal fuse, and the point of that is when the MOV starts getting hot, the thermal fuse blows, which takes the MOV out of the circuit, so it's no longer dissipating heat. There's no current running through it, so it'll cool down. So it helps eliminate catastrophic, rather violent end-of-life mechanisms that you see sometimes. Then you'll see a traditional MOV, and it does have that catastrophic end-of-life feature. And finally, the isomov. So let's take a look at those movies. Six, two, fifteen. So take a look at the red thermally protected MOV. Starting to get a little warm, starting to get brown. Boom. So these are little handmade fuses, poor man's fuses, and yep. that stays. <clears throat> Didn't blow the fuse. Though. It did not blow the fuse. We can see the fuse plainly. So the thermal fuse did engage. So now look at this Our one. MOV's getting hot. You can see it doing something. Boom. Yeah, good. Now that did blow the fuse. Okay. Now that's 215. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just going to go up to 260. So here's the isomov. About 280. Because the other two are already gone. Yeah. Okay. So 280 is the highest voltage our Variac would get to, and it never blew at 280. I thought it blew at 300. So we ended this movie at 280, because that's the highest voltage we could get to, and the isomov never blew, and it, our experience says that these will blow typically around 320 volts AC. So that's one of the unintended advantages that we saw with an isomov is the tolerance to these overvoltage events, which causes the other devices to not fail, but, well, the middle one failed, one on the left, the thermal fuse engaged. Okay, so Paul, how does Isomov compare when it comes to end of life? Okay, I have some other movies that show this. And what you're gonna see, there's gonna be three different movies. 
The first one is a traditional MOV. We keep hitting this thing at 3KA, and finally on the 11th hit, you'll see it blow. Then I'm going to show on the second movie this thermally protected MOV. And again, we hit it at 3KA until it blew. In this case, it took the 8th hit. Then I'm going to show you a movie with the ISO MOV. And it never blew at 3KA, so we had to bump it up to 5KA. And it finally blew on the 17th hit. So let's take a look at those movies. Boom. So what's great about working at Bourne's is you get blow stuff up like this. This is a, it's a fun place to work. And as you saw, that is the, the fear that people have in using MOVs is that smoke and fire that you get when this thing blows up. So now let's look at this next movie with the thermally protected fuse. Oh, right. Pause. So this may come as a surprise because a thermally protected fuse is supposed to disengage the MOV before something catastrophic happens. And as you can see here, this thing just exploded. What's going on here is that um, thermally protected MOV is UL rated. But the way the UL test works is they apply the voltage, measure leakage, the device passes, they take it offline, they surge it you know, several times, they put it back into the circuit, check for leakage, okay, it passes, they take it back offline. What we're testing here is a live online test. It's, it's got AC voltage on it and we're applying the surge while it's still in the AC circuit. So that does not reflect the UL rating. This device does not pass the kind of test that we are performing here, which is the reality, right? You buy this protective device because you're going to plug it into the wall. It's going to stay plugged into the wall when the lightning hits. So this is a more accurate test than the UL test is. And as you can see, the thermal fuse does not provide protection like you might expect. So now let's move on to the next movie, which is the ISOMOV. Okay, so I'm going to pause this movie. A couple things to note. First of all, this is tested with 5KA surges compared to the other two, which were 3KA. And you'll see there was a little rupture on the left-hand side. You think, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. We just got through talking about this edge effect of traditional MOVs, that being the weak spot. You know, what's going on here? I thought this was a um, optimal current density design and the rupture could occur anywhere which is true. What's happening here is the epoxy package, the coating, that it just happened to crack all along that left edge, and th that was a rupture in the packaging, the, the coating. It's not the rupture of the MOV material. But still, it was not an explosive, violent explosion. This was a little puff that came out the side. So to summarize, we applied the surges, to end of life, we applied 3KA surges toward the end of life, and we saw an explosion. On the thermally protected MOV again, we applied 3KA surges till the end of life, we saw the explosion. On the ISO mob, we applied 5KA surges, and we saw the little puff come out the side on that thing. So uh, I would consider that a benign failure mode compared to the other two. There's really wasn't smoke and fire. Okay, so Paul, how does ISOMOV fit into the overall ecosystem in this arena? And what kind of numbers are we really looking at? Okay, good question. So here I show a summary of data sheet performance. And you can see little fuses in there on the uh, orange color and the rose on toward the top. You've got some older Borns parts in blue, followed by TDK parts in green. And then I show the Borns GMOV, which is a discrete MOV and a discrete GDT sandwiched together into a single package. It's, it's not an integrated design like ISOMOV, but that is another product we make. Then I show the little fuse TMOV, which is the thermally protected MOV. And at the bottom, I show the ISOMOV. And across the top, on the right-hand side, I show performance for 10 millimeter, 14 millimeter, and 20 millimeter disc sizes. So if you look down the 14 millimeters column, for example, 3KA is pretty much the best part you can get until you get down to the ISOMOV, and it jumps that up to 5KA. So what that says is you can keep the same performance you have now, but you can reduce the size of the disk from 
you know, 14 millimeter to 10 millimeter or 20 millimeter down to 14 millimeter, or you can keep the same size part and increase the performance you have. You know, this isomob is really a nice, nice part. Okay. So Paul, when it comes down to isomob versus a conventional MOV or a discrete MOV plus GDT, how does it really compare? Yeah. Okay. So this is basically a summary statement as well. And we've got all these benefits on the left and which boxes are checked by which parts. And you see the conventional MOV doesn't check any of the boxes. The thermally protected MOV on the right, it's just an MOV. So it's got the same issues that a normal MOV does, except it is UL rated. So you got a check mark on the right. A GMOV, which is, like I said before, a discrete MOV and GDT in one, a single package, checks off several of the boxes, but an ISOMOV pretty much hits them all. I've talked about a few of these, the extended life, TOV, the temporary overvoltage, state-of-the-art surge ratings. One benefit I didn't talk about is these are rated up to 125C. That's hard to find for MOVs and GDTs. Like I said before, this is a nice part, and it's pin compatible with normal through-hole MOVs, so it really doesn't take up any more space. Fantastic. Well, Paul, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, it is my pleasure. Thank you so much. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about Isomov from Borns. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.